Hey guys, today we're going to go over guitar scale practice for beginners. So I'm going to give you some tips that I use for beginners to learn new scales. So let's dive into that right now. So you've learned a new scale. Awesome, congratulations. Now it's time to practice it and actually start using it. So let's go step by step through some different phases of what you can do to practice your scales to really get them down. Okay, so once you learn a new scale, the most obvious thing to do is to play that scale up and down. So I'm just gonna use the A minor pentatonic scale for this to show you what to do with this. But I will also show you how to do this with like a three note per string major scale as well. So with the minor pentatonic, it would look something like this, just playing it up and then back down, right? And you only really need to do this to start to get that scale memorized. So you're gonna play up and down a few times and you wanna get really comfortable about it so that you can not think about playing the scale, you can just do it automatically. Right, or carry on a conversation while you play it. So that's the obvious, most important thing to do first. But once you do that, the thing that I like to do with students is throw them in the deep end and make them improvise with it right away. And the reason for that is because forcing yourself to be creative with it immediately is going to make you learn the scale on a whole different level. So what I've got here, uh, let's see, let me turn this on. So this is just a cool little backing track that I just recorded really quick. And what I would do is just have them take that scale and start improvising. Now when you're improvising, you're just taking the notes of that scale. And you're just creating your own short phrases or licks with it. And the idea is, is you wanna find things that fit. goofing off with it, right? Hey guys, real quick, if you are enjoying this video on how to practice your scales, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button down below. That way YouTube will show my video to more people and I can help more people learn guitar just like I'm helping you right now. So thank you so much for subscribing. Now let's get back to practicing your scales. So if you're wondering, that is A, and then D, and then a C add nine, and then back to B. So that's how you can play that if you'd like to record yourself doing that. It's so easy nowadays. You can do that yourself. Just record yourself on your phone, like on a voice memo app or something like you can get apps like GarageBand. If you have an iPhone, they're really cheap, they're really handy for stuff like this. So just get a cheap or free uh, recording app of some kind, record yourself and then play it and play over the top. <laughs> Right? And so I would want you to first play the scale up and down and get to know it. And then immediately start improvising with it. Okay. Now, what else can you do to practice your scales? Well, the next thing that I have students work on is scale sequences. So normally when we play the scale up and down, we're just going in a sequence of one note at a time. And a scale sequence will change up the sequence of the notes. So for example, with this minor pentatonic scale, one of my favorite ones to do is doing the scale in threes, which means doing it in groups of three notes. So you start from the first note 
which in this case is A, I'm gonna play up the scale three notes. And then I'm gonna go back to the second note of the scale, and I'm gonna play up three notes from there. And then the third note of the scale, and up three notes from there. And then the fourth note, and the fifth note, and then back to the first note, and second. So with that, that is one of the coolest sequences to start out, whether you're playing a pentatonic scale or you can do that with your standard scales as well. Right? So there's all sorts of fun things that you can do. Sequences kind of get into their own world but one of the cool things that you can do with that is when you are listening to guitar solos and you hear these really fast really cool runs they're usually just scale sequences and so that's how you do that is you get used to playing these sequences and you play them slow and you get faster and faster with them and so that's another way that you can practice your scales to learn them deeper and when it comes to sequences there's so many different sequences that you can do. Another great one for pentatonics is going in fours. So that's playing groups of four notes going. Right, so you just go up the whole scale in groups of four notes and then come back down. Now, if you're doing like a seven note or diatonic um, scale, like your major scale. One of my favorite ones is to do it in thirds. So that's playing the first note and then the third note from there, which would be the third of the scale. And then the second note and the note that's a third from there, which is the fourth note. And then the third note and then the note that's a third from there, which is the fifth. And then the fourth and sixth, fifth and seventh, sixth and octave, which is the first, and then the seventh and the ninth. And then you keep going through the whole scale. And then you come back down. Right, so you can do that kind of sequence. You can go in triads, so you're going up one, three, five, two, four, six, three, five, seven, stuff like that. There's all sorts of fun sequences that you can do to challenge yourself. So first, play it up and down. Second, improvise with it right away. Start getting creative with it. Third, start playing scale sequences. Now here's the cool thing. If you're awesome and you've gone through and learned every position of a scale, and so, for example, with your pentatonics, we have five positions, and I just did a whole video on that. So if you wanna learn those, go check out this video right here at the top. What you can do when you know all the positions of a scale across the entire fretboard is start connecting them. So for example, I can take my first minor pentatonic position like this and play up it, and then I'm gonna slide up to the highest note of the next position. So that way I can come down position two, like this. And then I could go back up that scale and slide up to the highest note of the next position and come down that one. And slide up. Right? So you can start to combine your different scale positions together, and that's really, really handy. Now, once you've done that, a lot of people will think, well, I know my scale, I know it really good, and I'm gonna say, no, you don't. <laughs> like, this is something that every day I'm going, you know what, I need to know that better, and I, and I find a new way to look at it. So if you've connected all the different positions of your scale, whether it's major scales, or it's your pentatonics or whatever it is, 
doesn't matter. Um, there's more ways to look at it. So I've recently been investigating this a little bit more. There's four directions that you can move on your fretboard, right? So moving this way from, from your lowest string to your highest string and back, I call this horizontal movement across the fretboard. I call moving up and down this way vertical movement. And there's lots of different ways that you can do this. You can go just on single strings. Right? So I could learn how to do the scale on single string. I could learn to do it on two string groups. Right? And you can do that on any set of strings as well. And so that's another way that you can learn it really well. You could do three string groups as well. Right? You could do four string groups, whatever you want, right? But then there's also moving diagonally. So check this out. I could take the first few notes of the minor pentatonic here. Right here, this note right here, the seventh fret of my fourth string is the same note that I started with. And so if I play five, eight, and then on my fifth string, I'm gonna play five and seven, and then five on my fourth, I can slide up to that first starting note and play the exact same fingering. So that's gonna be seven and 10 on my fourth string. And then on the next string, I can play seven and nine, on my next string, I have to slide up one fret, so it's gonna be eight, and I can slide that up to 10, and it's the same fingering from there too. So that's moving the scale diagonally, and you can do that with every position and on every group of strings as well. So I could start it here. Right, so I could keep doing that with all the different I can do that with all the different positions and get all sorts of different stuff going on. So that's moving horizontally this way, vertically this way, and diagonally this way, which is going from low on the fretboard on your low strings to high on the fretboard on your high strings. But there's another way that we can do this. We can go reverse diagonally. So we can actually start high on your low strings and go lower as you get to your high strings. And this gets crazy. It's a lot easier, um, for example, if you are used to three note per string scales, you can take two note per string patterns. So instead of going C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and continuing that pattern, what you would do is you would go C and D on one string and then do two notes on the next string, which would be E and F, and then two notes on the next string, which is G and A, and then two notes on the next string, which is B and C, and two notes on the next string, which is D and E, and two notes on the next string, which is F and G, right? can do this with your pentatonics as well, but you have to change it up. Instead of going two notes on each string, you would do one note on a string and then two notes on the next string and one note on one string and two notes on the next string. So you'd get something like this where you're going one note, two notes, one note. Right? So there's four directions that you can go. So if you feel like you know your direct, your scales really good, well, I'm just here to say, no, you don't. Because I sure don't. And a lot of people don't. And there's so many ways to practice these scales. So thinking about moving horizontally, vertically, diagonally, reverse diagonally, right? And then on top of that, there's usually multiple ways to do each one. Like horizontally, you can do a three note per string scale which moves barely diagonally, but it's still pretty horizontal. You've got your standard like caged shapes. And then on top of that, you've got variations of that. 
um, where the idea behind a lot of the cage shapes is on one of those strings, you're going to go like two notes instead of three notes. And it's to avoid this pattern of going two whole steps between your notes. So I found at least three different ways to go horizontally. And then between going single string, two string, three string, four string vertically, there's all sorts of different stuff that you can do. And then when it comes to diagonally and reverse diagonally, there's all sorts of fun, different patterns you can do. So when it comes to practicing your scales and learning them inside and out, that's where you start. Play it up and down. And then start improvising with it. Start having fun with it. And then start doing scale sequences. And then you can start connecting the different positions of the scale. And then from there, I would look at the four different directions that you can move along the fretboard with that scale, where how many ways can you play it horizontally? How many ways can you play that scale vertically? How many ways can you play it diagonally? And how many ways can you play it reverse diagonally? So there's a lot of different things that you can do to practice scales. And as I was doing the research for this, I kept running into more exercises for doing stuff. But um, there's so many different ways to practice scales. It, it is a huge topic in and of itself, the different ways that you can practice scales. But this stuff will at least get you started and get you with any scale that you learn and start helping you be able to understand it and be able to use it and be able to move it around the fretboard and understand what's going on with it. So have fun with this. This is going to be really good for your scale knowledge and your fretboard knowledge. Okay, guys. So those are the steps that I usually take beginners through to start practicing their scales. And you can go so deep with this. Like I said, there's so many ways to practice scales. It is a huge topic in and of itself. And there's so many cool exercises out there. So have fun with this stuff, getting started with it. This stuff will give you a really solid foundation with understanding your scales and being able to practice them and use them. So I hope that was helpful for you and I hope that makes what to do to practice your scales in your practice. You don't have to spend a ton of time doing this. Just spend a few minutes a day practicing your scales using one of the different things that I mentioned today. And that's going to help you out in the long run and help you really start to understand your scales and be able to use them all over the guitar and do lots of cool stuff with them. So thanks for being here today. If you've watched this far, I do have another gift for you. If you go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, there you can get my guide, the top 10 things to learn on guitar first, which is a 17 page guide of 10 things that I teach beginners first when they're starting out to get them playing more music a lot faster, a lot sooner on the guitar than starting out with like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or even struggling through open chords right away. There's easier things that you can do when you start out. So I want to give that guide to you. So go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, download that guide for free, and then I will catch you. Have fun with these scales. Have fun practicing them. Hopefully that cleared things up. If you have questions about other scale practice stuff, do leave a comment down below or let me know which one of these exercises is your favorite. Which one are you going to implement in your practice today? And I will catch you in the next video.